Bibles this morning to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. I will read one verse again for emphasis sake. So good to see all of you here with us. Some of you have been under the weather and been sort of sickly. And some of you have been going through some trials and tribulations, but aren't you happy that God allowed you to be in his house on this morning yes. to have a word of encouragement, a word of hope, a word of exhortation for you so that you can be encouraged to go out and live the principles that God has taught us in the Bible and we could do what God wants us to do. That is pleasing unto him. Pray for me silently this morning as I try to lift you up and give you a word of the Lord. If you need a blessing, say bless the preacher. If you need a word from the Lord, say speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. For your servant is listening. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 18. But now God has placed the members. Somebody said the members. Each one of them in the body just as he desires. Amen. I want to continue our series on the body of Christ. God's des the design for a healthy spiritual body. God's design for a healthy spiritual body. Amen. Just for emphasis sake, let me just say to you this morning that the body of Christ is also the church of Christ. Amen. The body and the church are two synonymous terms in which if you refer to the church of Christ, you're also referring to the body of Christ. Amen. And that body of Christ, that church of Christ is not a building. It's a spiritual institution that was purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Amen. And I'm happy that I am in that blood bought institution known as, as the body of Christ, the uh, church of Christ, and so should you as well. But I want you to know that according to some research over the last few years, there has been a cultural shift in which you all should know. Uh, for example, there used to be a time in life where you were respected if you were a Christian. Am I right about that? Amen. People looked up to people who were Christians because Christians uh, had something about them that was distinctively different down through uh, the annals of time and down through the years. But now we live at an age and at a time where Christianity is not so much respected as it used to be. As a matter of fact, church you will find people running further away from wanting to be affiliated as a Christian than what people used to do. So in other words, it's not culturally accepted to be a Christian nowadays like it used to be because if you call yourself a Christian, now you are necessarily alienating yourself from all these other people and all of these other sects and all these other groups that are out there that are going against Christianity. Let me drop this on you. There is an attack on Christianity right now. Amen. And the attack is to not to put a dent into Christianity. Let me help you, church. Come here. The attack, somebody said the, the attack, is to kill Christianity. That's right. Amen. I want you to know that. These groups, and we, we can go down the list of these different types of groups. Uh, God bless them, hopefully, to repent. But I want you to know that there's an attack on Christianity to kill uh, Christianity. And now it used to be that there were a certain percentage of people mm -hmm. when polled would say that they were a mainstream Christian or they belonged to a mainstream Christian affiliation. But now there is something that exists called nominalism. Mm. Somebody say nominalism. nominalism. Now, there are nominals out there. These used to be people that um, by name would associate themselves as a Christian, mm -hmm. but they were not practicing Christians. Amen. Right. So if you were to ask them, are you a Christian? They would say, yes, yeah, sure, I'm a Christian. But they would affiliate with being called a Christian, but they weren't practicing Christians. Are y'all following me so far this morning? Amen. So now people, the, the, the nominals have now been reduced to no Christian affiliation. In other words, those who used to be nominals that, nominals that would say, I'm, I'm a member of this church, but I just don't attend. Now there are people that say, I don't even have no Christian affiliation no more. All right, now. Those people are called, they call 
nuns, no Christian affiliation. Mm -hmm. So now the increase of those who have no religious affiliation has now uh, taken place in our society and in our country. So that means that although there are people who have a firm belief and a firm conviction in Jesus and in the church, uh, particularly in the church of Christ, there are those who don't want to have nothing to do All right. with being affiliated with Christian. a church or being called a Christian. And y'all are right on this morning. Amen. So since there is an attack by all other groups, I want to help you understand something uh, in the body of Christ. You mm -hmm. and me and the person on the pew next to you, everybody needs to come together. Y'all yeah. keep smiling this morning. Everybody needs to come together. Yes, if all of these other groups are out there and they're strong in their beliefs, mm -hmm. why are we not strong in our beliefs to stand up to be a Christian? Chapter number uh, 12 and verse 
By number 14, the Bible says what? For the body is not one member, but many. I'm so happy that's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Read it one more time, brother. Mm -hmm. For the body is not one member, but many. Mm -hmm. The body is not one member, but what? But many. I'm so happy that's in the Bible, because there was a time in my ministry when I was trying to do everything. Right, yes, sir. Amen, right. somebody. Right. And the reason why I had to, because there was nobody else who was performing in the body. Amen. Yes, so I had to preach. I had to scripture read. Uh -huh. I had to do uh -huh. communion. I had to do the prayer. Uh -huh. I had to come and decorate the building. Uh -huh. I had to sweep up the room. Right. I had to do all of those things. Right. But I'm so happy. Read it one more time, brother. Is 
That's right. That's right. Okay, let me say it one more time. You are not here right. in this worship service as a member uh -huh. of this congregation and the body of Christ by accident. Right. Well, how do you know that, Brother Jones? Because Brother Robinson just read that God yes, sir. has placed you in the body just as he please, please. Please. Understand you've been educated that God has given you some gifts. So you can't hate on him or you can't hate on him because they're using their gifts. Because God has given you some gifts too to use. So just use your gifts. Now there are some great coaches uh, in this world. One, uh, most of you sports fanatics understand who Red Auerbach was. Uh, he was a famous coach for the Boston Celtics who have won so many championships, but did he actually win a championship himself? He was a coach. What did he do? He just put the team together. Amen, somebody. And everybody on the team has a different function, and he helped them achieve the highest uh, amount they were able to do as a team. There was a man by the name of Vince Lombardi. Most of you football fanatics know him as well. And I want to give you a quote from Vince Lombardi, who is considered to be 
one of the greatest coaches uh, in NFL history who won many and multiple championships uh, in the 1960s. Vince Lombardi said, the achievements of an organization are, are the results of the combined effort of each individual. Amen. The achievement of an organization are the results of the combined effort of each individual. Uh -huh. What is he doing? He's really taking a principle from 1 Corinthians 12. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all he's really doing. He is taking a principle from 1 Corinthians 12 and applying it to sports. And guess what? It works. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And it works in the spiritual realm as well. When each individual member comes together and works, Church, Man. and you got plenty of gas, 
God says, I want you to exercise that gift. Right. Right. Let's just say you got a lot of money. God says, I want you to use your money and give with liberality. Mm -hmm. Whatever your gift is, use it. Uh -huh. Are y'all hearing me on this morning? Yeah. Some of us have some beautiful smiles. All right, yeah. That's right. So when folks walk in the church, you know what you can use? Y'all yeah, keep all smiling right. on this yeah, morning. Right, right. Is that all right? That's all right, right. Yeah. If you got a good smile, yeah. why, 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 your, why, why your dentist appointments are going pretty good? Right. And, and your dentist is cleaning them boys so That's good, right. boy, you flossing two days on the day ain't met somebody. Uh -huh. Man, smile when you come to church. Yeah. God wants you to love him and worship him regardless of if everything is going sweet into your life. That's right. Amen. God wants you to have full dependence on him if things are going good right. or if things are going Amen. Amen. In other words, God needs some people that have total dependency that he is watching, right. he is looking, he understands, he knows, and he wants you to fully depend on him. Amen. Even Amen. if you have no visible results that God is moving. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Perseverance. Amen. Perseverance. We have to persevere because we are members of body. the body of right. Christ. And when you are a member of the body of Christ, you will experience suffering. Yes, I'm going to do a series on next year, don't worry about it, but let me touch it. Um, being a member of the body of Christ is the best thing you can ever be. Amen. That's right. But I need to inform the church that being a member of the body of Christ also means that you're going to go through trials and tribulations. Yeah. The problem that we have is when we go through problems and tribulations and testing, we can't behave and act like the world. That's right. Why? Because we're members of the body of Christ. So when you read 1 Peter, and, and when Peter says, if you're going to be challenged, uh -huh. just look at Jesus as the example. Yeah. Though he was revived, uh -huh. though he was spat upon, uh -huh. though he had all of these heinous acts done to him, uh -huh. he never opened up his mouth. Amen. If we are members of the body of Christ, we have to be different. Mm -hmm. We got to be different. We got to be different, distinctively different, because we are members of the body of Christ, which means that every individual part has to function together, have brotherly love. Has to persevere, have to endure trials, and go through all this stuff. But wait a minute, brother Jones, I got to deal with all that in this life. Yep. Mm-hmm. And be the first to tell you. That's right. And as you operate in the body of Christ, it's tough. That's right. Here's the toughest thing about ministry. One of the toughest things. It's one thing when the folk outside the world persecute you. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. That's, That's it, bro. Right. That's it. Yeah. That's one. Right. But when you got members of the body of Christ mm -hmm. right. persecuting each other, That's right. man, that hurts hurtful, man. Yep. And then the natural tendency is to be mad, not to come, mm -hmm. fall away, fall away from Christ, not be dedicated, not be committed. That's the natural tendency. Let's just be honest. Right. Don't you do that? Right. There is a reward. Somebody say reward. Reward. <laughs> I said there is a reward. reward. There is a reward waiting on you. Yeah. Now the problem is that the devil is going to put suffering, pain, devastation, death, humiliation, mocking, beating, persecution, all of that stuff. Watch this before we get to the finish line. Amen. 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 
Because he knows that at the end of that finish line, God has a crown. Amen. Oh, my goodness. I said God has a crown. Yes, sir. All righteousness yes. waiting for those who believe and have faith until the end. Yes. So the devil is going to put every roadblock he can to get you to stumble. Yes. So just know that being a member of the body of Christ means that you still have to be obedient. God has a reward for me. Amen. God has a reward for you. Are you going to let some dusty-eyed woman, mm. some dusty-eyed man stop you from getting your reward? Yeah. And here's the thing. You have to understand, we are going to have some awkward moments. Yeah. Some moments where um, things are uncertain. Yeah. And then you just don't know it can go both ways. you got to trust Amen. in the Lord. Your 
right. you got That's right. yeah, yeah. a gift. Mm -hmm. Some of us got multiple gifts. Yeah. Well, Brother Jones, when do I do it? When there is a need. Uh -huh. When there is, and guess what, church? We got a need. Right. Yeah. Let, me, let me just say this, and I'm, I'm quitting. Um, I mean, the sermon. I mean, I got more word. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to be nice and uh, let you let you go here. But I want to challenge you, and I want to encourage you, and I want to motivate you this morning. We uh, were blessed to start a television program. Praise, <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, and I found out yesterday that a church who has 250 plus members are ending their television program. Wow. Mm -hmm because of finances. We average 30 to 40 people of service and we have never missed a payment. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! And the reason why we have that is because God told us to use our gifts. Yes, that's right. So if Mark Not what we're here for. That's right. We're here to encourage you. Amen. Not to 
condemn you. Right. So if you work a secular job and you have a, a, a skill in that area, mm -hmm. you here in the church. All right. Sure, sure. And I don't know uh, what the skill set of, of most of you uh, have, but whatever it is, if you see a need, if, if I don't see the need, if you see it, let's talk about it. Let's do it. Uh -huh. Let's put some on paper. Let's put a plan together. Let's have you use your gift. It ain't the preacher, the leadership, or the membership responsibility individually. It's everybody's. Uh -huh. We are many members. One there should never be any small congregations of the Church of Christ. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Because the mandate was given to the disciples, and if you are born again Christian believer, you are a disciple. Here's the problem: we have nominal Christians that exist, mm -hmm. and what that simply means is we got people that profess the name of Christianity, but they don't practice. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. Don't be an Allen Iverson Christian. <laughs> Watch out, y'all. <laughs> y'all don't remember. All right. In other words, don't not practice Christianity. Amen. And think it wrong to practice it and just call yourself a Christian and be satisfied with that. We need practicing Christians. What does that mean, Brother Jones? That means that when you come here and I unfold the text and show you that God has set the members, right. placed the members in the body of Christ just as he desired, and he wants everybody to exercise their gift. This doesn't have time for Romans 12. I don't have time to go deep into that. That's your homework assignment. Mm -hmm. God wants you to exercise those gifts. Amen. Then if you exercise your, your gifts, then you become a practicing Christian. Right, good. We have to get past just coming to church. That's right. That is not enough. Amen. It's good, but it's not enough. That's right. You have to get to the point where you practice the principles and the applications of the scriptures that we read and apply them to your life. Watch this, 24-7. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now my life changed. When I started reading and started doing what God told me to do, mm -hmm. every parent in here wants your child to do what you tell them to do. Mm -hmm. Can I suggest to you that God is the same way with us? Amen. He is our Father. Yes. He says in His Word to do this, and He expects us to do that. Why? Because He's placed us here for a reason. Right. Let me let me say this now, quick. You are at this congregation for a reason. Right. And you are at this congregation today for a reason. Because I just believe somebody here uh, is lacking the, the confidence that you have purpose in your life. Right. I just believe that somebody is in here is lacking the confidence that God can truly use you. I just believe that somebody in here has a mountain of skills that are just sitting on the table and you're just waiting to erupt and utilize those skills, yes. skills talents, and ability. And you just need somebody to tell you even on this morning. Yes, sir. God. God has spoken through his word and we are going to go to a higher level we are going to teach baptize people and teach them some more so that when the end comes they can make it to heaven right. now if you're here and you're not a member of the body of Christ here's what God is uh, telling you directly to your spirit today in order to be a member a part of the body of Christ we need to go back up to 1 Corinthians 12. Mm -hmm. And Brother Robinson, I want you to read verse 12 and 13. And we'll use that for our invitation scriptures uh, on this morning. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, the Bible says what? For as the body is one, yeah. and hath many members, yeah. and all the members of that one body, go ahead, read. being many, mm -hmm. are one body, yeah. so also is Christ. Christ has one body, yeah. one church. He wants all of us to be unified. Yeah. The body is one just as Christ is one. And Christ has one body and he has one church. Somebody said one church. One church. Somebody said one church. One church. There is only one. You need to see this in 2016. Mm -hmm. There is only one church that Jesus Christ founded and died for that you can read and verify in your Bible. Okay. When you walk out of these doors, you'll find 300,000. That ain't my problem. Mm -hmm. I need to show you the one that's in the Bible. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be a member of the body, it's one body. You need to 
to see what you need to do to get in there. Verse 13, the Bible says what? For by one spirit. For by one spirit. Amen. Are we all baptized into one body? Yeah. There it is. There it is. Uh, you want to get into the one body? Uh, There's only one spirit, the spirit of God. Amen. That can help you be baptized. Somebody say baptized. Baptized, baptized into what, Paul? Into one uh, body. So Church. And watch this, let me help you. Tomorrow, 
When you wake up and get, get ready to go to work, you're gonna be enthusiastic. Do you know your milk shake is dependent upon it? Uh -huh. Amen, somebody. You know if you don't go to work, you don't get paid. Uh -huh. Watch this, same thing with Jesus, same thing with God. You got to you got to make sure you obey him, otherwise you won't get the blessing that he has for you. Amen. Amen. Don't you cut corners. Don't you, don't you cut corners. Give him what he deserves. He gave you the best that he had. And I want you to submit your life to him. And then when you see a need in the church, you exercise your gifts, invite people to church, conduct Bible studies, attend all of our ministries, tell people about our ministry, go to our website, tell people about the television program, tell people about the radio program, invite people into your home, give people money, a couple of dollars every now and now when they need it. Do all those things and use your gift. I just believe there's one person here. Let us all stand, let us all stand, I'm finished. I just believe there's one person here, at least one person who desires to be a member of the body of Christ, who believes with all their heart that Jesus hung, bled, and died on the cross of Calvary for your sins. Amen. When you didn't deserve it, and he died for you, so that you can have this precious opportunity to walk down these aisles Praise and make a baptism once you decide to repent of all your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Amen. You gotta walk down and do it right now as we stand together. And sing our song of invitation. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Jesus lived in me. Hallelujah. 